God. Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful, genuine spring day in the spring of 2022. It is now Monday, March 21st, 2022. And as your old doomsday invalid, I finally, for the first time since Thursday, was able to get in my gas sucking truck and head to the supermarket and uh, so one thing since I live off of hot dogs so I go to get the hot dogs a pound of hot dogs I the pound of hot dogs what was it a dollar seventy eight and then I go to get the buns the buns are four dollars and nine cents for a dollar seventy-eight pack of hot dogs, and uh, <laughs> so anyway, not sure what I will be using as hot dog buns. This damn dog, he already has Lyme's disease and another tick disease. Hold on, little dog. Let me get this damn tick off of you. God Almighty, I've pulled four ticks off of me past few days but anyway so I'm there looking at four dollar and nine cent hot dog buns at the local supermarket here in the Oasis of Freedom and I come back home and turn on the mainstream media news and find the number two story on the planet oh uh, yes before I uh, before this camera gives out uh, I do. I want to send out a big thank you to Fred and Russ. Fred and Russ both answering my call for a new camera to chronicle the collapse since I've chronicled the, called the collapse of this camera. Somehow it's, I'm hoping it's going to hold on till Russ or Fred's camera get here. Uh, Let's hope so. So anyway, after I do appreciate that, guys. Uh, so after seeing the four dollar and nine cent hot dog buns, we're having a caterpillar invasion as well here. There is no insect apocalypse in the Point Lonesome Swamp. I come back to find number two story on this planet. I can't tell the name of the newspaper Ukraine war threatens to cause a global food crisis yep 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 uh, the war in Ukraine has delivered a shock to global energy markets now the planet is facing a deeper crisis a shortage of hot dog buns well that and everything else, anything especially made of wheat. Now the planet is facing a deeper crisis, a shortage of food. And I've chronicled the uh, dog food and cat food aisles. Alright little dog, I don't know what you're going then if you're so... Get me away from these damn caterpillars. The dog food and cat food aisles, good lord. I'm just going to have to start feeding Sancho hot dogs uh, just with no buns. A crucial portion, a crucial portion of the world's wheat, corn, and barley is trapped in Russia and Ukraine because of the war, while an even larger portion of the world's fertilizer is stuck in Russia and Belarus. The result is that global food and fertilizer prices are soaring. Since the invasion last month, wheat prices have increased by 21%, barley by 33%, and some fertilizers by 40%. The upheaval is compounded by major challenges that were already increasing prices 
and squeezing supplies, including the Corona Panic, shipping constraints, high energy costs, and recent droughts, floods, and fires. Now, economists, aid organizations, and government officials are warning of the repercussions, an increase in world hunger. The looming disaster is laying bare the consequences of a major war in the modern era of globalization. Prices for food, fertilizer, oil, gas, and metals like aluminum, nickel, and palladium are all rising fast, and experts expect worse as the effects cascade. This is David Beasley, executive director of the World Food Program, the UN agency that feeds 125 million people per day. I suspect the vast majority in sub-Saharan Africa. Quote, Ukraine has only compounded a catastrophe on top of a catastrophe. There is no precedent even close to this since World War II. Close quote. Now this might have something to do that the population of the planet was, I'm guessing, one-fourth of what it is today during World War II, maybe a third of what it is. Could somebody check out what the population of this planet was in 1945 compared to the eight billion today? Maybe the, in, you know, adding five billion whatever mouths to feed since World War II could have something to do with the fact 125 million people a day uh, are living off of food handouts from the United Nations. Nowhere in this story are you going to have that little inconvenient truth mentioned that there would be no global food crisis on this planet today if the population on the planet was where it was in World War II. This is not rocket science. This is third grade math and nobody wants to talk about why there's a goddamn global food crisis brewing. Okay? Anyway, let's get back to the mainstream media who does not want to talk about the truth after I get another caterpillar off my computer. All right. Ukrainian farms are about to miss critical planting and harvesting season. European fertilizer plants are significantly cutting production because of high energy prices. Farmers from Brazil to the great state of Texas are cutting back on fertilizer, threatening the size of the next harvest. And do not forget China. China itself facing its worst wheat crop in decades after severe flooding is planning to buy much more of the world's dwindling supply, you know, to feed their own mouths. And India, which ordinarily exports a small amount of wheat, has already seen foreign demand more than triple compared with just last year. Do the math here. Around the world, around the world, the result will be ever or even higher or ever higher grocery bills. In February, U.S. grocery prices were already up 8.6% over a year ago. 
the largest increase in 40 years, according to government data. Economists expect the war to further inflate those prices, so I guess we can look forward to $5 hot dog buns. For those living on the brink of food insecurity, you know, like all of those mothers of seven in Madagascar lining up for food at the UN for their seven children, you know, those people living on the brink of food insecurity, the latest surge in prices could push many over the edge. After remaining mostly flat for five years, hunger rose by about 18% during the corona panic to somewhere between 720 million and 811 million people. Earlier this month, the United Nations said that the war's impact on the global food market alone could cause an additional 7.6 million to 13.1 million to go hungry. The World Food Program's costs have already increased by $71 million this month, enough to cut daily rations for 3.8 million people, said Beasley. Quote, we will be taking food from the hungry to give to the starving. That is the United Nations, yes. We'll be taking food from the hungry to give to the starving. Rising prices and hunger also pre present a potential new dimension to the world's view of the war. Could they further fuel anger at Russia and calls for intervention? Or would frustration be targeted at the Western sanctions that are helping to trap food and fertilizer? While virtually every country will face higher prices, some places could struggle to find enough food at all. Now, if you are in the market, if you have an appetite for caterpillars, I highly advise moving to the Point Lonesome Swamp. There are more caterpillars. You could feed your family of seven caterpillar stew all day long here. Armenia, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, and Eritrea have imported virtually all, otherwise known as 100% of their wheat from Russia and Ukraine, and now must find new sources. But they are competing against much larger buyers, including Turkey, Egypt, Bangladesh, and Iran, which have obtained more than 60% of their wheat from the two warring countries. And all of those countries will be bidding on an even smaller supply because China, the world's biggest producer and consumer of wheat, is expected to buy much more than usual on world markets this year. Uh, on March the 5th, China revealed that severe flooding last year had delayed the planting of one-third of that country's wheat crop, and now the upcoming wheat harvest looks bleak, said China's agriculture minister Tang Renjian, quote, This year's seedling situation can be said to be the worst in history, close quote. Rising food prices have long been a catalyst for social and political upheavals in poor African and Arab countries, and many subsidized staples like bread 
in efforts to avoid such problems, but their economies and budgets already strained by the corona panic and high energy cost are now at risk of buckling under the cost of food, economists said. Tunisia struggled to pay for some of its food imports before the war, and now it's trying to prevent an economic collapse. Inflation has already set off protests in Morocco and is helping stir renewed unrest and violent crackdowns in Sudan, said Ben Isaacson, a longtime agricultural analyst with Scotiabank, quote, a lot of people think that this is just going to mean that their bagels, or hot dog buns, are going to become more expensive. And that is absolutely true, but that's not what this is about. Close quote. Since the 1970s, North Africa and the Middle East have grappled with repeated uprising, said uh, Isaacson, quote, what, ac what actually led to people going into the streets and protesting? It starts from food shortages and from food price inflation, close quote. Countries afflicted by protracted conflict, including Yemen, Syria, South Sudan and Ethiopia are already facing severe hunger emergencies that experts fear could quickly worsen. In Afghanistan, aid workers warn that the humanitarian crisis has already been exacerbated by the war in Ukraine, making it more difficult to feed the roughly 23 million Afghans more than half the population who do not have enough to eat. Norudin Ahmadi, director of Bashir Navid Complex, an Afghan imports company, said that prices were rising across the board. It took him five days in Russia this month to find cooking oil. He bought 15 liter cartons for $30 each and will sell them at the Afghan market for $35. Before the war, he sold them for $23. Quote, the United States thinks it has only sanctioned Russia and its banks, but the United States has sanctioned the whole world, to close quote. For the global food market, there are few worse countries to be in conflict than Russia and Ukraine. Over the past five years, the two countries have together accounted for nearly 30% of the exports of the world's wheat, 17% of its corn, 32% of barley, a crucial source of animal feed, and 75% of sunflower seed oil and important cooking oil in some parts of the world. Russia has largely been unable to export food because of sanctions that have effectively cut it off financially. Ukraine, meanwhile, has been cut off physically. Russia has blocked the Black Sea for exports, and Ukraine lacks enough rail cars to transport food over land. What is now becoming more worrisome is the next harvest, particularly in Ukraine. On March 11th, Ukraine's agriculture minister begged allies for 1,900 rail cars rail cars of fuel, saying that the country's farms have run out of fuel after supplies were diverted to the military. Without that fuel, without those fossil fuels, he said, Ukrainian farmers would be unable to plant or harvest. 
This is when you make a, uh, a global agricultural system dependent on fossil fuels. This is what happens. What's going to happen is that damn tripod is going to blow over in the wind if I don't block the door with the caterpillar encrusted trash can. I can't believe this camera is still going. Uh, there are other hurdles. The United Nations, god damn caterpillars, the United Nations estimated that up to 30% of Ukrainian farmland could become a war zone and with millions of Ukrainians fleeing the country or joining the front lines, far fewer people can work the fields. Russian and Ukrainian wheat is not easily replaced. Inventories are already tight in the U.S. and Canada, according to the U.N., while Argentina is limiting its exports and Australia is already at full shipping capacity. Over the past year, wheat prices are up 69 percent among other major food exports of Russia and Ukraine. Corn prices are up 36 percent over the past year and barley up 82 percent. The war also threatens another longer term shock to the food markets, a shortage of fertilizer. Again, this is when you make your fertilizer dependent on fossil fuels. This is what happens. Matt Huey, a farmer near Corpus Christi, Texas, said that skyrocketing <clears throat> fertilizer prices had already forced him to stop applying fertilizer to the grazing fields that nourish his hundreds of cows, assuring that they will be skinnier come slaughter. Now he is worried he will have to also reduce fertilizer for his next corn crop which would slash its yield. Let me get the caterpillar off my we are so fucked hat. Said the farmer, we have gotten into uncharted territory. Yes you have. Russia is the world's largest fertilizer exporter, providing about 15% of the world's supply. This month, just as farmers around the world prepared to be planting, Russia told its fertilizer producers to halt exports. Sanctions already were making such transactions difficult anyway. So there is no more fertilizer coming out of Russia. Let me get the caterpillar off my neck. Sanctions have also hit Russia's closest ally, Belarus, a leading producer of potash-based fertilizer critical for many crops including soybeans and corn. But even before the Ukraine war started, Belarus's fertilizer exports were blocked because of sanctions over its seizure of an expatriate dissident. Good Lord, you can see how you're connecting some dots here. In another ominous signal to fertilizer customers and to anyone who eats food that needs to be fertilized, earlier this month, European fertilizer producers said they were slowing or halting productions because of soaring energy prices as many fertilizers are made with natural gas. Uh, it's mainly ammonium nitrate they're talking about here. You know, the king of the chemical uh, big ag fertilizers is natural gas is uh, a huge, huge component, uh, the, the, the huge fossil fuel component of the global 
uh, food supply, which is 100% dependent on fossil fuels. Every aspect of the global food supply is dependent on fossil fuels. Brazil, the world's largest producer of soybeans, you know, those soybeans which are being grown on what used to be the Amazon rainforest, the Pantanal, and the Chaco, uh, you, you know, those soybean fields. Brazil, the world's largest producer of soybeans, purchases nearly half of its fertilizer from Russia and Belarus. It now has just three months of stockpiles left. The National Soybean Farmers Association has instructed its members to use less fertilizer. If any, this, if any fertilizer this season, Brazil's soybean crop already diminished by a severe drought is likely to be even smaller. This is Antoni, Antonio Galvin, Soybean Association's president, quote, criticizing international sanctions, quote, they are the sanctions are preventing fertilizers from getting to producing countries. How many millions are going to starve to death because of the lack of these fertilizers? Oh, Jesus. Well, I, I, I could feed half of Brazil on these caterpillars. Take a wild guess where Brazil sells most of its soybeans to. This is a real brain teaser. Brazil, in turn, sells most of its soybeans to China, which uses much of that crop to feed livestock. Fewer, more expensive soybeans could force ranchers to cut back on such animal feed, meaning smaller cows, pigs, and chickens, and higher prices for meat. John Bacon House, a corn and soybean farmer in Hastings, Iowa, said he prepared for fertilizer late last year because he worried about a looming shortage. His fertilizer I'm sorry, he prepaid for his fertilizer late last year because he worried about a long time shortage. His fertilizer still has not arrived and he now has less than a month to apply it to his corn crop. Without it, he said his yields will be halved. Quoting Farmer Bakehouse, <clears throat> You know when they show the cars jumping in slow motion and the passengers inside are up in the air? That's what it feels like. We're all just kind of suspended in the air waiting for the car to land. Who knows if it's going to be a nice gentle landing or if it's going to be a nosedive into the ditch. Oh, that was from the good old New York Times, that uh, third biggest story on the planet. From the New York Times, baby. So anyway, uh, I need to wrap up this rant because I'm going to start sweeping up uh, these billions of caterpillars. Here's one on this leg. Here's one on my broken knee. I've had enough of this goddamn knee brace, guys. Uh, good Lord, I won't tell you where this caterpillar is. Uh, unless you're a caterpillar. Uh, anyway, get out there and enjoy your... Uh, fertilizer while you still can on this spectacularly gorgeous spring day in the collapse. The uh, camera has survived another 30-minute video. Unbelievable.
Bye, guys.